What's up, everyone? How you doing? Colin Egglesfield here. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Colin. Feel free to grab a coffee. You know, if caffeine is not such a great idea at this late hour of the day, then feel free to grab an adult beverage or whatever whatever beverages or food you like so uh, you can tune in for the next hour of some stimulating, inspiring conversation. This show is all about having those conversations that I think we all wish we could have, but for whatever reasons, we're afraid to, or we don't know how to. And uh, tonight, I have a very special guest who is going to be talking with me tonight about the amazing hot topic of relationships. So as someone who uh, has been uh, promoting this platform of inspiration over the past couple of years, I love to have conversations that help us get a better understanding of who we are because I feel like if you know, have, have a better understanding of who you are, it is, it, uh, it's, you're able to go out into the world and be more successful with whatever it is that you're wanting to accomplish, whether that's for uh, pursuing your dreams, fulfilling on your goals. And as we step into the holiday season here, there's a lot of us who, uh, you know, with, the, with parties and, and family gatherings, you know, some of us who are single, we show up at these holiday events and once again, we're showing up alone or we're thinking about, well, everyone else is going to be like linked up and, you know, Aunt Fred and Aunt Martha have been married for 45 years. Why can't I find someone who is my person? And, you know, it's it's difficult nowadays. This is the first time in society where we are really actually trying to find our, a partner that is rooted in desire and love and attraction. You know, when you think about it, marriage was really an institution that was created for survival. I mean, you would get married basically so you could have a bunch of kids to work the fields. And there wasn't, you know, love wasn't necessarily the, the sole reason why you got married. But nowadays where we all are pretty self-sufficient and we can pretty much have anything at the touch of a button, we can have our food ordered, we can watch movies, we can date at the touch of a button with all these dating apps. So more so now than ever, it's really all about finding that person who is your life partner, someone who you can share your amazing experiences with and that person where you feel like where you're having your breakdowns or you need support that you can go to. And I've been doing a lot of uh, reading about relationships because you know through some of the failed re relationships that I've had, I've always been curious of why they didn't work out. And I've been reading books like Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and a lot of work from uh, David Dada, Dada, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and uh, Alain Bo, uh, de Botton. Um, a lot of really great books out there on relationships, but when it really comes down to it, into the nitty gritty, and, uh, and the actual day-to-day -day of being in a relationship, there's some things that sometimes you know, get in the way of romance and passion. And uh, there's a really great speaker out there. Her name is Esther uh, Perel. And she talks about the, uh, the difference between desire and love. And when we're in a relationship and we are looking for our partner, obviously we want that connection. We want the sparks. We want the fireworks. And we want to feel like we have a, you know, a fun connection with someone. So we want that desire. We want that adventure. We want that mystery. But then we also want the security in the relationship. We want to be able to trust the person that we are with. We want to feel like we can grow together and that we can build you know, a solid foundation so that we can then take that foundation and build you know, the solid uh, building blocks to build a long lasting lifelong relationship, or at least that's the dream. And I think a lot of us sometimes can get fed some, some, some things just from like story tales and the ro romanticism of relationships where, you know, it's just supposed to happen and someone's going to just sweep us off our feet. And I think the more that we can get practical about how to really truly make a relationship work, what to really look for in a person. And again, really knowing yourself, knowing what your values are so that when you are dating someone, you can actually really ask those questions that, help you get to know that person from their value standpoint, what their dreams are, what their goals are as well. Cause a lot of the times we just are attracted to someone and then we're like, all right, this is, this is hot stuff, baby. Let's make this work. And you start dating and the physical attraction is there. And then after a while, you really don't necessarily may not necessarily be compatible with this person. Cause you didn't maybe ask those 
questions in the beginning of the relationship. So tonight, I have the privilege of bringing on someone who is incredibly insightful in the area of relationships. She is also a master life coach. And uh, I've known this uh, amazing woman now for almost a year. And uh, she's doing her own coaching programs. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about what she specifically gets into. But uh, she's an amazing, amazing woman. And she's got uh, quite, a, uh, quite a following. She, uh, and the reason why is because not only is she a certified master life coach, she also is a neuro-linguistic program, programming practitioner. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Tony Robbins is a big proponent of NLP. Uh, she's a theta healer. So I'm curious to hear about what that is. And she's a passionate lifestyle entrepreneur. She was also named in the top 40 under 40. And she was honored with a medal of honor from the city of Ottawa and uh, as a change maker. And she was awarded a woman of distinction award and Fun fact, she was actually knighted as a dame in the Order of St. George in 2015. So excited to ask her about what that was like. Pretty amazing. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to bring to the stage Miss Amanda O'Reilly. What's up, Amanda? How you doing? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Well, so excited you. to be here. Hello, everybody. I'm excited that you are here because... Uh, you know what? I'm excited for you to just share with us all the insight and knowledge we need to know in order for us to be able to fall in love and have someone sweep us off our feet and live happily ever after. Can you give us that, Amanda? Well, do you have a perfect Hollywood script? Uh, because you know, that's about the only place that we are going to find that. Have right? you seen Pretty Woman? Uh, you know what? Yes, I love it. But is that reality? Exactly. Right? Is that reality? And I think this is where, you know what? I love Tom Cruise. You look like Tom Cruise. <laughs> like Tom Cruise look alike a little bit, but Tom Cruise screwed us up with the, you complete me and Disney with the, you know, the, the Prince Charming and all that stuff that presupposes that we are not already complete and we are not already whole. So these are kind of the messages and this is a stereotype stuff that's coming at us where you say, okay, yeah, I want to walk into love or mm. I want to fall in love. Really? No, we want to be whole. We want to be complete. We want to choose love because what better emotion to choose than, let me show you my shirt, you? than let love, right? Like we want to lead with love, but I think before we can lead and attract it, we have to be it. So we have to come from a place of being. And yeah. so, you know, you and I talked about that a little bit offline. It's, you know, I just turned 49 and I'm single and it's by choice. Um, and we were kind of laughing going like, okay, and in your intro, why have we not found love or success? Mm -hmm. And I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me and I can say, I was looking for something outside of myself. And I think a lot of us are kind of guilty of that where we think that we're going to get the guy that, you know, the ring, the house, the kid, the dog, the per like, then we will play, well, then we'll be happy. Then we will be settled. And we play the when then game in life. But the truth is we are the love that we've been waiting for our whole lives. And, and that's the relationship that we really need to deepen is the one with ourselves in the mirror. Yeah. Yep. I definitely uh, agree with you with the whole law of attraction component of it, where we have to be happy with ourselves in order for us to be able to invite someone into our, our world. And that notion of there's, I'm one half, you're the other half, and together we complete each other. It's, uh, I mean, it sounds romantic. And <clears throat> I think, you know, obviously the Hollywood romanticizes yeah. a lot of this stuff. But again, like I was saying earlier, you know, the older we get, I think we we get more practical about what it is that we really are looking for in a relationship. And so if you could tell us a little bit about, um, you know, when we're when we're first starting to meet someone new in a relationship, what advice would you give someone who uh, who is really looking for someone who's, you know, that that serious life partner to be able to, to start a foundation on? Well, I think that. I, if I'm honest, and I'd love to hear in the chats, 
do you actually know what you want? Because a lot of us say, oh, I want X, Y, and Z. But is that really what you want? Or is it what society or your parents or the standards or whatever it is that you think you should want? Is that really what you want? So I would start with, what do you even want? Because a lot with a lot of my coaching clients, when I ask them that question, they don't even know. They're too afraid to dream big. They're too afraid for the ask. So they they settle, right? So they want the, the, the Waldorf Historia reality, but they have the Motel 6 mentality. <laughs> so it kind of doesn't work. So it's a question of what do you want? And mm. are you being that version of you in order to attract what you say you want? Yep. Do you feel like people look for the the external components like tall, dark, and handsome or beautiful, tall, blonde? And or do you do you feel that uh, it really comes down to a feeling that you get with someone? Like when you are coaching people, do you find that they get tripped up in maybe the externals or like when you were asking, what do you want? Do you really go deep into, okay, these well, are maybe some important questions that you may want to ask someone that you're sitting across from on your first date without like going into a whole psychoanalytical type of situation where you're like, where are you from? Who are your parents? And what was your upbringing like? But just- but some fundamental questions like, so do you want partnership? Do you want to get married? Do you want kids? Like, I mean, a lot of us will, will play small because we're too afraid to go in with saying, hey, listen, I am dating to marry. I'm not dating to just hook up. I'm dating to marry. Are you? Like, we're afraid to say that because maybe that'll chase him off. So I'm going to settle. Then maybe I'll get a couple of dates or I won't be alone or he won't reject me or whatever the story, the narrative is. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't go in with the intention of what they actually truly want. Correct me if I'm wrong, but would you not say that that's a fair assessment? I, I think so. Yeah. I think uh, because I've, I've been on dates where it's been more so conversation about like, is the food, like, did you like the yeah. food? And it's, it's, you know, or, or just what movies do you like? And it's, you know, it's kind of that. It's little bit of that like we don't have time. I think if 2020 taught us anything is that time is, is precious. It's limited. If you don't know what you want, how you want to spend your time, who you want to spend it with, what kind of energetics, what kind of energy you want to be surrounded by, how you want to feel in somebody's presence, then I would invite you to, you know, take to your journal and really just ask, okay, Christmas is around the corner. How is it that we could believe in Santa, the tooth fairy, the Easter bunny? We can believe in all these things, but we can't believe in ourselves. And we can't believe that actually I am worthy of attracting a, a successful, conscious, present, helpful, secure, communicative, loyal, outstanding, funny, charismatic man. Oh, well, that, that, that's a lot. <laughs> like, I'm just going to settle for tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, tall, dark, and handsome. Where does he live? Is he is he employed? Is he financially secure? Does he want a family? Does he have kids? What, you know, like, there's just so much to it that I think we we dance on the, on the, on the side of it because we don't feel worthy showing up for the full ask. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can see that. I, I think, you know, I think the first couple of dates you're getting to know someone, you're trying to see if there's any sort of like commonality there. And there's a, uh, a psychologist who uh, Malcolm Gladwell talks about in his book outliers. And he his name is uh, John Got Gottman, yeah. I think. Yeah. The and, he can predict if somebody's gonna if he can predict if somebody's gonna stay married or divorced, like I think it's in like minutes. Yeah, within like five minutes of meeting a couple and yeah. asking a certain series of questions. And what he's discovered is that the secret sauce to long-lasting relationship is not necessarily what each other finds in the other person, it is that they have common they have uh they have common likes. So like if they both like to play tennis or if they're both into uh, scuba diving or if you, have, if you have common likes that you both like to do something together where there's you're able to share 
those commonalities. He said that's a, a really big indicator that there's going to be success in that relationship because you're not relying on the other person for your happiness, for your fulfillment, for that gratification necessarily. And I think that's one of the, the pitfalls in relationships where we look outside of ourselves for that validation. Yeah. And it's like, well, why were you talking to that person for 10 minutes? I've been standing over here and you didn't yeah. even notice me. That's yeah. like, well, you could have come over and said hello. Like, yeah. And that's a lack of completeness. That's a lack of self-worth, a lack of self-esteem. So it, it's that I think that before you get into a relationship with somebody else, I think you have to be secure on your own. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, it, proximity is power as well. Like it's, 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 it's understanding the other person. It's understand. it's, it's having the, the proximity, the, the, the relation, if you will. But I mean, I can't stress it enough. I, I really think the first relationship that people need to enter into intimately, because intimacy is into me, you see. So mm -hmm. you really need to have that intimate relationship with yourself first. I, I believe. And I think that that's, and I'll go first. That's where I went wrong. I was looking for them to make me happy. Well, it's your job. I'm not happy, but that's, so it's, so there's something wrong with you, but I was the mm -hmm. common denominator in all those relationships. So it wasn't somebody else's job to make me happy or to provide. It was my job. And then it was my job to communicate effectively to say, Hey, these things matter to me. This is important to me and set set the man up to win because ladies we don't do a very good job of that because we think that men should know what we think and men should know what we need and when they don't meet our needs then we're like oh my god he you know i must not be attractive enough he must not like me enough i must not and we make up this whole story in our head but men think very different men are single focused and women have like diffused awareness. So men don't think the same that we do. And we treat mm -hmm. men like hairy women. <laughs> we treat men like hairy I women. And we, and, and we treat men like when we say, well, you, you should have done this. We're comparing that against what a woman would do. Not what a man would do necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, so women are expecting men to communicate how women communicate. Well, women women are expecting men to be women in essence. Like they're they're expecting us that they're in expecting the them to think and behave the way we think and behave, and it's impossible. Can you give us an example? Um, okay. So you go out and do the groceries. I ask you. Hey, Colin, you know, here's a grocery list. Can you go out and do the groceries? You come, mm -hmm. you go out, you do the groceries. You're like singing all the way home. Like, I've done the groceries. You put the groceries on the counter, your phone rings and you leave and you go and you take care of business. Yeah. So in your mind, I won. You asked me to do the groceries. I did the groceries, but I'm now disappointed going, oh my God, like you left the yogurt, the milk, the this, the that on the countertop. So then I'm going to find fault with all the things that you do, but I didn't give you a roadmap. I didn't say, okay, I want you to do the groceries. And then when you come home, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put this away, put this away. Blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, oh, okay, perfect. That's easy. I could do this, but you are single men are single focused. So if I give you a task, you go to complete the task, you complete the task. You think I won. But then I come home and I'm like, well, it, like it's, it's common sense. Or why did you load the dishwasher that way? Like it's common sense that, that the plates go here and the cut, like, right? And then so men are just like, okay, I can't win. So then we give up. Then they give up. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it depends on the person, obviously, because it, it makes it sound like men need direction on steps and every little thing where, you know, I think a lot of men – are intuitive enough to know that, you know, bring the groceries home, put them in the refrigerator. But I will, I do, I will grant you that we do, we can't read women's right. minds. And I think there, that's where there's some, there's a disconnect in relationships where I've been in relationships where I feel like I'm just expected to know and do what she has wanted. And because I didn't know it or wasn't aware of it, she takes it as I don't care or 
I don't love her or yeah. there's there or I'm interested in someone else. And it really comes down to maybe not necessarily saying uh, putting the person on the defensive, because as soon as you start to put someone on the defensive and point out the things that they're, they're doing wrong, then especially with men, we get very defensive and our guard goes up and we're like, oh, yeah, you want to fight? OK, let's go. Whereas I think it's great to ask a question of, you know, when you do this, are you aware of these are the consequences or, you know, honey, when you do this, uh, it makes me feel like you're not interested or that I don't matter. And, where and that's you, where it comes it back to have that conversation. Yeah. But that's where it comes back to what I said earlier, where you're really saying, Hey, these are the things that matter to me. And this is what's important. So if I'm going to give you that information, I'm setting you up to win. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think at least from my personal experience, women have not always told me how to win, like what would make me win with them? What would, what makes them feel valued? What makes them feel Do you want to know why? Loved. Why? Do you want to know why? Because yes. they don't, they themselves don't know. Or they maybe they're them. afraid to say it for fear of conflict. Uh, well, what would the conflict be? Because men are natural born providers. So you want to provide, you want to win. So if I tell you how to win, you're going to, you're going to score. I mean, it's really easy. But, I, yeah. But if, yeah. but if I'm not telling you how to win and I'm not telling you the rules of the game, how could yeah. you ever win? Exactly. But my point is I've been in situation or relationships where I have felt she has been afraid to voice that. Yeah. For fear of if I maybe don't like it or whatever that I may leave and yeah. it is so crucial that you ask for what you need and, and say what you need. Otherwise, I may not be the right person. If I'm not the right person, then you're wasting your time and you need to get out of this relationship and find someone who's a better fit. Yeah. But, but if we go one step b before that is if somebody is grounded in self-worth and they trust themselves and they absolutely love themselves unapologetically, mm -hmm. yeah. they're not going to lower their standards. They're going to be like, Hey, look, I, I want to set you up to win. I want to be happy. I want you to be happy. Like this is what it is, but that comes with truly understanding who you are and loving yourself and having a degree of self-love and self-worth. So that's where I say the longest commitment we will ever have is with ourselves. Right. But most of us don't have a relationship with ourselves. Right. So is this something that you do in your coaching where you help people get confidently in touch with who they are and what their value systems are yeah. and what their, what their strengths are so that when they step out into the world and on a date, that they are confidently aware of who they are and what they bring to the table. Well, so I'm not like, I, yes, yes. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm a relationship expert. I am an, I'm an expert on um, subconscious blocks, inner mm -hmm. child healing, um, I will show you all the ways in which you are not free and you don't feel worthy enough to show up and ask for what you deserve. Because here's the truth. We had worth at birth. Okay. Our creator gave us worth at birth. Somewhere along the line from, you know, childhood to adulthood, we started questioning our value and our worth because we take everything literal as children. So if we didn't get our needs met or if our parents were upset or if something happened, we thought we were bad. So then we stopped asking for our needs to be met. We stopped, you know, raising our voices. We stopped being effervescent. We, we played small because if I'm too loud, if I'm too bright, if I'm too this, then I get in trouble. So I'm going to shrink. So my job is to peel all that back and it's to introduce you to the version of you who you are and who you're created to be before the world told you who you had to be. I because like I think that. that's where we get into trouble. Yep. And we talked about this during my master class with you. It's that I believe that we send our representatives out into the world, right? We send our actors out to play that role because it's safer to send somebody else out that is actually not our true core yep. because if that person gets rejected, that's okay. Cause that's actually not me. I'm going to hide. But 
I would love people to unapologetically own who they are, all their, all their crazies, all their desires, everything that they want and just be like, Hey, this is me. Yep. And Julie Sh uh, Shooter here says, Amanda, do you find that women who are confident and strong intimidate men? No, I, there's a difference being intimidating versus being intimidated, right? So somebody, if, if, a, if a feminine woman wants to attract a masculine man, she can't be in her alpha because alpha mm -hmm. alpha doesn't work. So I would ask, what is your definition of, what was it, strong, independent, what was her definition? Confident and strong. Okay. So does confident does confident and strong in her opinion repel a worthy strong man? So like I wouldn't think so. If a, if a man is strong and worthy, I think he's he's going to appreciate a woman who is strong and worthy. And so yes. I think the problem here is that is that Julie is perhaps maybe dating men who are not secure in themselves who they, and who they are and able to just hold their space in the space of you, Julie, who sounds like you are a someone who is very confident, strong, and maybe has you know, probably has a great job, has, knows how to hold some great conversation. And so it really just it's a matter of finding the right fit if from from my opinion. And I think it's about owning who you are, right? It's about owning who you are. So if you're strong and you're that, like own that, and then the right person will be attracted to those qualities. The problem is, is that we then shrink. We then downplay. We play small in order to think, well, I'm not going to be desirable. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be attractive. They're not going to want me. So I'm going to downplay it as opposed to, no, this is actually who I am. Because like attracts like. It's the being. It's who you're being. It's not what you're doing. From an energetic standpoint, we're all energy. Yep. So it's who you're being. And if that's what you want, and that's who you actually are in your dominant energy, it's not a protective mechanism where I need to be strong and I need to be, you know, to keep everybody out. So if you are in your power, in your true divine power where I am strong, I feel safe, I know I am safe. And I know what I bring to the table, then you're going to attract that protector, that alpha, that energy that's just like, that's just my queen. And I'm coming to just, yeah. you know, to protect. Yeah. I think, right? I think we can all be guilty at some points in our lives when we maybe have had a crush on someone or really liked someone and we are, we're so attached to, I hope they like me. I hope they pick me. I hope this works out. And what I've found is if you can focus on what it is that you want to create for yourself in that relationship, so whether it's love, abundance, confidence, like you were saying, if, if become the person that you want to that you want to attract by becoming those very things. I'm being and that version. The way that you show up, you, you hit it right on the head. The way you show up for anything, whether it's a date, a relationship, a uh at work, the way you show up, that energy, people can can sense it. They feel it. That's what I've learned in my auditions. And when I was starting to go into my auditions with that sense of, oh, God, I hope I get this audition. I hope they like me. I hope I don't screw up. Guess what? That energy translates into just it's neediness. And but people lack. can sense that. And neediness is an attraction killer. Yeah, but it's a lack. You're coming from a place of lack. It's right. like- exactly. I hope they're going to like me, meaning that you don't like you because if you're hoping that somebody else is going to like, if somebody else likes you, that's a cherry on top. Mm -hmm. It's do you like you? Yes. Yeah. Right. And then when you are doing this work and you feel like you're in a place where, okay, I like who I am. And even though I may have these flaws or like, maybe I don't necessarily, you know, maybe I could lose a few pounds. Really, ultimately, what it comes down to is what I remind people is people don't fall in love with you for the physical parts of who you are. They're going to be attracted to parts of you physically, 
but they fall in love with you for who you are, what you do, what you bring to the relationship, how giving you are. And we as men, we love when we see women demonstrating kindness, thoughtfulness. We, when we see a woman gossiping and being catty, to us, that's, you know, it's a turnoff because it, it's like there's that, there's that judgment. And so I, I think we, in a relationship, I think it's important that, um, that we, you know, show up from that place of being whole and complete, which is doing our self work. But then when we feel like we're in that place, okay, feel, feel pretty good. I'm ready to go out there. What would you say are some of the most important traits to look for in a partner? Okay. I want to just bookmark that for a second. Cause I just want to, I want to just backtrack on some things that you said. So, okay. and this is something that, um, I learned is that women think, oh my God, is he going to be attracted to me? Right. Am I pretty enough? Do I have to lose a couple of pounds? Like you said, you know, do I have the COVID weight? Are that? but here's the thing about attraction for men specifically, men, have to be, when men say I'm attracted to you, it's not they're attracted to you. It's their body is physically attracted. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but that's what it is. Like we got it all screwed up. We're thinking, oh, I have to be this and that. And I got to become this in order to be attractive. But that's not how it works. It's you. It's the attraction in you. Because if you don't have that, you don't have that attraction in no. you. Right? So it's in you. And that'll only go so far. And I love how you said, like, it's the mind, body, soul. And here's the other thing is that the right partner will fall in love with your soul. And your soul doesn't weigh anything. So your soul doesn't have cellulite. Your soul doesn't have, like, the 20 COVID pounds. Right. So the right relationship, it's soul to soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Aim for that. Yes. As opposed to trying to be something that you're not. Aim yeah. for the soul love. Nurture your soul. Do yes. the things that light your soul up. And I promise you, yes. you are going to attract your person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so go back to the question. Sorry. I, I, I wanted to add that because I was like, ugh. So what once we're question? connected to our soul and we're feeling good and we go out there, what would you say are some important things to look for? in the partner that you are, are dating or looking to create a relationship with? And maybe what are some, some red flags to look out for? Oh, well, red flags. So if, if, if somebody talks bad about their partner, that's a red flag. In my opinion, if, if somebody talks badly about a previous partner, okay. red, flag. red flag. Um, what to look for. I think aligned values, but that goes back to what we saying. It's like, you know, you have to know yourself first because what happens is from a, a brain chemistry, if you don't have, so we have a part of our brain called, you know, this, the reticular activating system. So mm -hmm. well, it, it filters out everything. If it didn't filter out stuff, we would like our heads would blow off because we have 60, thousand bits of information coming at us all the time, all the time, all the time. So when you have a list of saying, these are my top qualities, these are the virtues, these are the values, this is what I want. These are my non-negotiables. Like what are your non-negotiables? Because if we don't have our non-negotiables, if we don't draw a line in the sand, it's like we will fall for everything and anything. Like you get on that date and you're like, oh my God, but he's so cute. Yeah, but X, Y, and Z, right? So it's like, know what it is. So your brain is already, it's anchored in there because otherwise what happens is it's like the stupid drug happens. And I think it's like the, 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 all the dopamine and the quarter, like everything, they call it the, the stupid drug, the love drug, like your love drunk. And mm. you get the, the, you know, the, the beer goggles or the love goggles or whatever it is. And then you start to miss the red flags. Oh, well, it's not that bad. Oh, well, you know what? He, he didn't text me for three days, but that's okay because da, da, da. So it's like, if is communication a high value for you? Is that a non-negotiable? Hey, listen, if we're out, it's a non-negotiable for me that we communicate. Even if you just, you know, shoot me a text and just say, hey, listen, I've got a work thing. I'm going to be unavailable. I'm going to be offline. So we're not making up stories in our mind. So what are your non-negotiables? What do you want? And it's it's a feeling, I think, more than 
what are you looking for? Is that, what do you want to feel? What do you want to feel when you get that text message? What do you want to feel when you go down on that date? What do you want to feel when you think about that person? What do you want to feel when you're in their presence? Because it's a feeling we're chasing. It's not a person, place, or thing. It's a feeling. I agree. So for me, it'd be like, I want to feel energized, magnetic, expansive. I want to know and feel that I'm growing. I want to know and feel that I'm safe to share all the colors of my rainbow, not just mm -hmm. the parts that are socially acceptable. So what happens if you find yourself in a relationship where there's a lack of that vibrancy, that connection, that energy, marriage, you know, some people are married. My parents were married for 46 years and, you know, there was ups and downs and ebbs and flows. And that's how love and passion and relationships end up. But I always remember my dad saying at the end of the day, he said, you know, when you have the right partner, when you just can't wait to go home to see them. And my dad said, after a long day at work, he was like, I always just look forward to coming back to seeing your mom. And I think that's, that's the glue that held them together. And I think also what, uh, what kept them together too was that they didn't always agree on things. And they, there was that passion. There was that friction where they cared enough about each other to, uh, to want to work through those difficult times. But ultimately, it was, uh, they had a soul connection that, uh, that kept them together. Well, I think it's the art of conscious communication, right? It, it's, it's not, it's not putting the other person down because they don't see your point of view. It's, it's wow. Okay. That's interesting because people give you information. So when a man speaks ladies, he's telling you what he values. So that's information. So, so for me, it's, it's to sort of say, look, we're human. Relationships are, are a big, giant Petri dish. And they are the biggest, ultimate gifts to show you all the ways in which you are not free and healed. So when a partner triggers you, mm -hmm. that's a gift. You go, oh, okay, wow. That <laughs> They're just holding up a giant mirror showing me all the ways in which I am not healed and or free. What a gift. Now, that's not easy. But right. it's a gift. And that's why people come into your life for, like they say, reason, season, lifetime. is because some people just come into your life to teach you a lesson that you otherwise wouldn't learn without them passing through. So mm -hmm. the mistake that I've made in the past, anybody else join me and make me not feel so alone, is I was, it was you, 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 you. But one finger pointing out, three pointing back. I was a common denominator. So it was never somebody else's, you know, job or fault. It was my interpretation or how I didn't set them up to win or how I, they didn't even know what my needs were. I remember my previous partner said to me, he said, you know, by the time I can even figure out what to do, you've done it 10 times over, like, and you've left me in the dust. Because why? Because I didn't feel safe for him to lead. So I led. And can you give me an example of with in like what terms or what? Type well, of all food? terms, all terms, because for me, the way I validated myself and the way that I felt worthy of love was in the doing. If I could take care of you, if I could do for you, do for this, do for that, you know, take if I could do, 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 mm -hmm. then I will be worthy of love. I was devoid of the being. Why? Because I didn't feel worthy of receiving. So I had a problem receiving. So it was much easier for me to give than it was for me to receive. And I think there's lots of women that will probably resonate with that. And that's conditioned, right? That's conditioned in us as, as, as little girls is we give. That's the people pleaser. Mm. That's the... Oh God, I don't want him to abandon me. So I'm going to self-abandon first. What do you mean by self-abandon? Not ask for my needs, not speak up, 
Um, when something feels off, I'm going to go along with it. I'm going to say yes when I really mean no. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to be abandoned. So I'm going to self-abandon. I'm going to become that people pleaser. I'm going to become that doormat. And then I'm going to get pissed off about it. Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah. So this is stuff that's conditioned in us. So for us as women, it's to sort of be grounded in our, in our, in our true sovereign self and say, no, this is what I want. This is what I'm worthy of. This is what I'm deserving of. And, and it's not from a place of ego at all. This is a place from true knowing of higher self, because when you're connected to source, higher self, it's only love. It's love for me and it's love for you and it's love for the greater good. Yep. And so I'll come back to my question. What do you do when you find yourself in a situation or a relationship where you're, you're just radiant and you're wanting to share this with someone and for whatever reason, maybe your partner is not necessarily be able to communicate or, or interested in that type of thing. Does it have to do with Love language, Joanna C. Slack asks yeah, here it, it could about be. love language. Should couples share some love language or should they adjust to each other's love language? Look at love languages are a secret sauce for sure. To understand if, if, if one's love language is um, words of affirmation and, and another's love language is, is physical touch, well, you can kind of see how they're going to be two ships passing in the night, mm -hmm. right? But to your point is if you find yourself in a relationship where you're growing and you feel magnetic and you feel all these things and you come home and then your, your light is dimmed, are you in the right relationship? I guess is probably the first question. And the second question is, you know, um, are you prepared to sit down and have the really heartfelt, truthful conversations about, hey, this is what I need, you know, to grow and to contribute and to continue to be the light, the vessel, the everything in this, the glue in this relationship. And, and these are what I need. And this is what I need. And then if you guys can't, you know, sit and, and, and come to an agreement, because oftentimes mm -hmm. the other person is just unaware. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's just like, oh my God, that, that means so much to you. Like, oh, well, why didn't you just tell me? Why didn't you just ask me? Or, you know, and it often gets to the point where it's like a breaking point and then all hell breaks loose. But what if it doesn't need to get to that place? What if you can sit down and have these non-threatening conversations where you're just like, hey, love, I really, this is what I really need. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I often joke, it's like, wouldn't it be amazing? You know, when you go to the hospital and you have like little charts outside of the door. So when the doctor goes in, the doctor just opens the chart and goes, oh, okay. Yeah. You have a broken leg and you have a concussion, you know, you know, it knows everything. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had like a chart outside of our bedroom where we can say, come in, don't come in. I need five minutes. <laughs> come in and hug me, text me, leave me alone. Like if we, if we told the other what we need, like what is the medicine? What is the remedy? Like yeah. how, how amazing would that be? Because here's the thing when, when a man is, um, men are protectors. So when a man is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but when a man is hurt or pissed off, what does he do? He will either lash out or he will go into his cave. Right. So he shuts down and he recluses when a woman is hurt or when a woman is angry or something, what does she want? She wants a hug. She wants, oh, you're yeah. going to be fine. And let me just love you and let me hug you and let me pet you. So what does she do when the man is upset? She wants to hug and, and he goes, stop it. I don't want anything. Of it. And then she's like, oh, he's so aggressive. He must not love me. And what do we do? We make up a story, <laughs> right? As opposed to really understanding, it's like that file. I just need five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think the most successful couples are the ones that know each other well enough where they can read each other's body language, where they can just kind of like glance at each other from across the room and just have that knowing connection. And, and that, it's not personal because it's not about you. It's not about you. It's about whatever I'm going through. And I'm just projecting that onto you because you're not understanding me. It, like, right. let's, let's say, 
right? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's hard not to make it about each other when you've invested your time, your feelings, your love. And I think a lot of the times people end up arguing about certain things like, why didn't you take out the garbage garbage or why were you late or why? And the underlying issue is I don't feel that you appreciate me or I don't feel like you respect me. So I feel like people skirt around the issue and argue about all this other stuff when really at the heart of it all, that's where I think well, what if you, the ships are passing in the night. What if you could stop and say, what need is this person trying to meet right now? What, what need is not being met in Right. The problem is though, Amanda, a lot of my guy friends, they're not really like into this kind of, you know, self-help. What are my needs? And what am I like? So how but do we then their partner, but then their partner is not hold either. On, hold on. How do we break this down where if you're in a relationship with a guy who is just like who likes, you know, just hanging out with the guys, playing like watching football, doing his thing, and the woman is, or I mean, either way, where one of the partners is like, I want to take this relationship to, to the next level. And the other one is like, what? What's wrong? What's the problem? Like, I mean, things are good. Where one someone wants to go deeper and the other one is like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, but they're, but they're mismatched. So one is settling and self-abandoning. And the other one is just like, dude, what's the problem? Everything is great. Like, have some chips and a beer. Like, chill out. Right. Like, they're totally misaligned, right? So it, I would imagine it is, okay, so we're in agreement that we, that we are married and we want to, there's, there's the commitment that we, it's reminding each other why you got married. So you've got to have agreement and, and, uh, and uh, awareness of do, we're here to be married. We're here for this union. And if you want the same thing, I think it's so important to get uh, agreement with why you guys are together. And if you can agree on why you're together, it's to, to create a, an amazing relationship with each other, to raise kids, to have an amazing family and to have, have a great, you know, have a great life. But I think what happens is the idea of each other's great life is different. And I think it's important that you get agreement on what that great, great life looks like together so that you can work towards that because that's where the disagreement comes in. And if a guy says, I think this is important for ladies to know that because a lot of my guy friends are just like, yeah, what? I mean, my girlfriend's talking to me about like love languages. And that was how my dad was. I mean, he, he discovered the love languages book and uh, he shared it with me and he was like, oh, now I understand why your mother gets so upset with me because I've been speaking this language and she speaks, he's a doer. And so he was all about, providing Excellent. and gift giving. And she was like, I want quality time. Yeah. And so that's where the disconnect was. And it wasn't until they finally had that conversation uh, and got agreement. Okay. Yes. I think what happened was we can get into this lull or this kind of like, well, I mean, we're, we're married, we're in a relationship. So what do I, why do I need to do anything new? But I think it's so important that we continually grow and recommit to each other and why you're in a relationship so that you can say like, okay, look, now that we're getting older, it was fun. We went to parties when we were in our twenties and now that, you know, maybe we're in our forties, let's take this to the next level, you know, because I think people can get into a rut where they're a little bored. They're a little like uninspired. But and I think this is the opportunity to be like, look, honey, like let's do something like, are you bored? I'm bored. And like Dr. John Gray said in, in Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, his wife came up to him and said, honey, I'm thinking about having an affair. Yeah. And he was like, what? And she said, but I want to have an affair with you. Right. So it's having these kinds of conversations. Yeah, but it's the playfulness, right? It's understanding. Right. I think even beyond the love languages is understanding people's human needs. Like if you're, if your top need is, you know, variety and adventure and freedom. And my top need is certainty. Well, we're going to have a problem and we're going to have a very mm -hmm. rocky yeah. relationship. So it's, it's to sort of understand what the other person's top needs are and, and how to meet them in effective, loving ways as opposed to destructive ways. 
And I think men get criticized for watching football and be and being a guy. And it's like, look, I need my guy time. I need to do my guy stuff. I'm a man. Like, I, the only reason why a man gets criticized for watching football is because she feels neglected yes. 99% of the other time. So if she felt full, if he filled her tank and filled her vessel and she felt full, she'd be like popping the popcorn and like bringing the beers and, you know, being the Hooters girl for him. But mm -hmm. she doesn't feel full. So she feels, you know, well, Football is more important than me. Mm -hmm. And then we tell a story. So it's a question of really getting to the dynamics. But here's the thing. And I always say this to my clients. They're like, I'm not happy or blah, 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 blah. He's doing this or he's doing this or he's doing this. And I said, if you're happy, you don't try to be more happy. You're just happy. <laughs> so that's your job is to be happy. Make yourself happy because when you're happy and when you're full, life is good. And you attract people. So my advice, when someone is not showing you attention, the worst thing you can do is try to go towards them and get the attention from them. It is literally doing something cool and fun where you are in your element, where you are having fun so that a man is going to hide in his cave. The reason why a man asked you to marry him to begin with is because he saw something in you that he was attracted to that was vibrant. And if you want to continue doing that, keep doing stuff that makes him come out of his cave. You can't go into the cave and expect to pull him out. You got to keep doing stuff that lights you up and is inspiring to you. And if your man doesn't want to do it, then go do it on your own. Go out there, go on a vacation, go on a trip, go skydiving, go take a cooking class. Hey, honey, let's learn how to cook. Yeah, I don't feel like it. All right, see you later. I'm at the cooking class. And then you do your thing. And I think that's I think that's the missing thing where women just keep going back or and either side, you know, it works. Well, it is. It's like, well, I, I want more romance than be more romantic. I want him to be more loving than be more loving. I want him to pay more attention to me than pay more attention to yourself because it's always the lack. And so it's like, well, he's doing this. Well, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Or what are you not doing for yourself? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not reading any of the comments. But it seems like we're <laughs> I, resonating. I, I, I think we're here. resonating with a lot of people here. Uh, Bruce Stover says, where in all you say is compromise? No two people can be that perfect. I was married to my perfect guy, 62 years. So yeah, I, I think compromise is a big part of this. And, and I think it's a give and take and a partnership. And I think it's important to honor each other's needs and recognize and giving each other the space to be able to go do the things that each other wants to do and know that you're not always going to be able to do what you want. Like sometimes, you know, guys want to sit and watch the football game, but they're invited to a baby shower and you go with your wife to the baby shower because that's what you do. And then there's always going to be another football game, you know, and you just, you compromise. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's the art of conscious communication. If people are full up, <laughs> that guy is going to be like, honey, I'm, of course I'm coming to the baby shower. But if he's like in lack and he feels not appreciated and he's being emasculated, he's going to go, you know, dragging his feet and not want to go. So it's really about understanding what the other person needs, understanding what the other person's values are, understanding the other person's love language, mm -hmm. but seeing them as an individual, seeing them as whole and complete and Honestly, it's not our job to change men. The only man you can change is one that's in diapers. <laughs> right? Like, but we go into it like we're looking for a project. We want to change a man. Oh, he'll be just perfect if he does this. It's not our job to change you guys. And I think that's the, the, the number one thing that women get wrong. And I certainly did it for decades is trying to change them. Mm. But 
when we know how hard it is to change ourselves, we realize that it's like next to impossible to change somebody else. So focus and channel that energy on yourself and making yourself feel whole and complete and the best possible version of you. And then like the laws of attraction will take over. It's, it's just, it's energetic. It's the way the universe works. We are all energy. So likes attracts like, right? Can you give me some advice on, I've been in relationships where, you know, it's the little things in a relationship, like I'm just using this as an example, yeah. like leaving the toothpaste tube, the cap on the toothpaste undone where the toothpaste gets on the countertop or leaving the dishes in the sink or, or the way in which they uh, maybe repeat themselves in a sentence or something. How, how do you, uh, is it that way? Okay, so when they leave the toothpaste off that frustrates you? Well, I'm just using that as an example. So my question is, how does it, how do you communicate that without it trying it coming across? You're trying to change them. But you don't you just, you just say, <laughs> sweetie, this is something that's really important to me. I know it's like, I'm totally anal. I know it's kind of like a little quirk, but like it drives me crazy when you leave, when someone leaves the two, the cap off it. I know it's really silly, but like, it would just like, it would like mean the world to me. If you said it like that, I'd be like, let me put the cap on the toothpaste. Okay. Right? All right. <laughs> like it's just to sort of say, I know it's really silly and I know it's like, you know, but this would really mean a lot to me. And this is what it would provide. It would just, it would like, I okay, whatever it is. Okay. I give you an example. I can give you an example about the trash for women. Okay. If women don't mm -hmm. like taking out the trash, if it's, if you, if you live in a, in a, like I live, I'm in here in Florida and I live in a condo and I have to go downstairs today and it's like, oh my God, do I have to really go take the trash out? My son is here. Okay. My 19 year old son is here. So I say, Oh, it would be so amazing if you could take the trash out. Like it's going to allow me just to not have to feel like I have to get dressed and get my shoes on and get all gross and dirty and drag the thing out. And I would just, I would feel so amazing. And it would just be so awesome and I'll feel so good. And this is what it's going to provide. And I'll give him all the reasons why it's going to, he's like, he will skip out the door. Oh, like that, like all I have to do is just go to the garbage chute with the garbage and then you're going to be happy and you're going to like be singing and you're going to clear out. Let me go. Okay, let me go do it. Because you're setting them up to win. So I'm telling him yeah. what I want him to do and what it will provide me. And I think that that's, that's, that, that's, that's the difference. We don't set men up to win by telling them it's an ask. It's a perfect ask. And, and vice versa, okay? Yeah. By saying, hey, sweetie, this is really important to me. Yeah, men, this matters, we just want to be this means a lot to me. We want to be successful. So, if we can make you happy, if you set us up to win, we will feel good and we will keep coming back for more of that approval. <laughs> but that's exactly it. So, if it, it, it's like give you the game, the rules of the game to win, right? Yep. But oftentimes we change the rules because we don't even know what the rules are. Because we don't really know what makes us happy. We kind of just think mm -hmm. we do. And then when it doesn't go the way we want it to go, then we get mad at you for not being what we think you should be. But who we think we should be is who we are comparing ourselves against, which is the perfect woman who doesn't even exist. Right. It's like if you feel like the desire that you just you want to fly and it's like you're trying to learn how to fly without reading the manual on how to fly the airplane. And then you're frustrated on why you're jumping off the cliff and you can't seem to get airborne. And so it's like, pick up a book, start reading or watching some of these YouTube videos on relationships and love and desire. And then you'll have something to talk about with your partner the next time you go to dinner so that you're not just sitting across from each other, just picking through your food and talking about like, you know, the weather. Well, get curious, get curious, ask a question. Men love to talk about themselves. The problem is, is that we interrupt men. We don't let them complete a sentence. <laughs> right? Oh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, we're really good at that. So what if you just like put invisible duct tape and got curious and let a man talk and don't oh, interrupt him? Interesting. Interesting. 
Well, <laughs> this is an amazing conversation. I can't believe this whole hour has like zipped I know, by. it's flown by. Uh, Lacey LaBay says, damn, this woman is blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Colin, like, should we should we give them a little bit of a spoiler of maybe it was something that we're planning? Okay, sure. Why not? Go for it. So who here would be interested in taking a relationship course with Colin and I? Because we've been kind of talking back and forth, thinking that maybe this is something that we would like to put together if there was some interest. Yes. Amanda and I have been chatting now over the past few months, and uh, we've been kind of brewing this idea of doing some sort of relationship seminar where we could really go deeper into this stuff. Because, I mean, honestly, this hour literally flew by. It I think did. <laughs> we could really talk a lot more about this. And uh, you've got, just from talking to you, you've got a ton of really great, useful, practical tools and insight that I think a lot of people could benefit from. And then I can just come in and just tell you how amazing you are and share some of my <laughs> personal failed dating experiences. And maybe you could coach us all on how to find true love. How about that? Well, it starts with here. It starts inside. So that's all I can say. You know, awesome. we are the ones we've been looking for our whole lives. And I think that that's, you know, statistically with women, 91% of us don't like who we see in the mirror every day. And 50% of us can't even look at ourselves in the mirror. So we've got work to do. We've got well, work to do. Say those statistics again. 91% of women yeah. do not like who they see in the mirror every day. Wow. And 50% of us can't even look at ourselves in the mirror. Is that physically or just... Just, we just, they can't, mm -hmm. they, they have, they just have such a, a bad relationship with the, 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 and I, and listen, this is why I created worthy ones. I was that woman. I did not like who I saw in the woman, in the mirror every day. I beat her up. I was not a champion cheerleader. I didn't believe in her. I, mm. You know, I didn't love her unconditionally. It was, I will love you if you meet these criteria, if you meet this number on the scale, if you are this, you know, size of a dress, whatever, whatever, whatever. So we put all these conditions on ourselves. So mm -hmm. if we can't authentically and truly love ourselves, we will never, ever be able to receive the love of another because we don't believe we're worthy of it in the first place. And it's not that, you know, another person, you know, there's this the, a meme that's going around that says, oh, you can't love another person until you love yourself. Yes and no, you can, but you, you will never be able to, you won't believe it and you won't be able to receive it. Hmm. So it, it starts with us. So, and on the, the topic of worthiness. So tell us a little bit about these worthiness wands. Yeah. So I created these, uh, this necklace, it's an anchor. So that's where my NLP comes in. Um, so they're called Worthy Wands, and they were born of, you know, a really dark time in my life. I, my almost seven-year relationship came to a crashing halt, and I really had to look myself in the mirror. I, I was the common denominator in every sort of failed relationship, and I was like, why is this not working? Like, what mm -hmm. is it? And at the root of it, I really realized I was addicted to the do of life. So if I do for others, then I would be worthy of love. And I didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to receive. And I didn't feel enough. And Amanda actually means worthy of love. It took me, you know, 44 years to claim that title. And so what I did was uh, through NLP it is like this, you know, the anchor, which you can anchor in a state. And epigenetics has now shown that our cells are always listening. This is why the work that you and I do is so important because every word that you speak, the word spelling has the first, has spell in it. So words basically cast spells. Mm -hmm. So everything that we say, our cells are listening. So I decided to stamp the words worthy and enough on you know, on a necklace and wear it to reprogram my subconscious mind because our, our, our retinas and our brain learns through repetition. Mm -hmm. So I needed to anchor that in and really get into my nervous system that I was worthy of love. I didn't need to perform. I didn't need to be anything other than who I was created to be. But society doesn't teach us that, especially as women. We're not taught that. We're taught, well, you have to be X, Y, Z to be worthy of love. And it's just not true. Mm -hmm. So I created these anchors um, they are changing lives all around the world. They've saved five lives to suicide that I know of because women, 
you know, the, the, the wand went in front of them and they decided I'm actually, I'm worthy and I'm enough for this life. And, and what do I need to do to change? So I'm a big proponent of, of really owning your worth. We are, we had worth at birth. The only way we actually ever lose our worth is when we give it away. Yep. And the only time we can ever feel not enough in life is when we're comparing ourselves against somebody else. Absolutely. Right. Yep. And that's all that's ego is it's our ego yeah. says, I'm not enough. I am not worthy. I am jealous. I am da, da, da. That's all ego. Your higher self is the truth and your higher self would never say that. So if anybody here is like, oh, you know, I feel all these things. I'm not dateable. I'm not, you know, I'm never going to find somebody. That's not true. That's a narrative. It's a story. Mm -hmm. And your higher self, the one that's connected to the creator, whatever it is that you believe in, it's just not true. You weren't born to suffer. So. Love it, Amanda. That's, that's my, that's my awesome. belief. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. And before we wrap up, I want to uh, offer you the, the opportunity to share. Yes. Your favorite picks on some movies so that you may be able to offer some suggestions to our viewers over the holidays um, as they uh, sit down with their families over the next couple of weeks and uh, and watch some flicks. So first question for you is, what is your favorite movie of all time? The Notebook. The Notebook. Yeah. That is one of my favorite movies, too. Yeah, I love a good love story. I'm embarrassed to say it, but it is. I amazing. love the I it's love it. Like, yeah, Noah and Ali are uh, are two hashtag of goals. The most romantic, right? Like, yeah. would you not want to die holding hands with your like your beloved? I mean, hello. Yep, yep. That and you saw that they had friction, they had passion, they didn't always get along, but they respected each other and loved each other. Yeah. And you know what? Even like when we talked about it not being personal, like every time she went at it, he didn't take it personal. He's just like, okay, sweetheart, you know, just let me pull out a book and let me just yeah. read you, you know? Yeah. I love he it. That's smiling. my favorite. Yeah. That was great. Uh, what is your favorite movie from when you were a kid? So I think I, I have two. One around the holidays specifically, which I've watched every year for 49 years, probably multiple times, The Sound of Music. Oh, great movie. Love The Sound of Music. Yep. Um, and that's a holiday. Every every time, you know, Christmas, it, it pops on. So I love that. And then growing up, it was Grease. I mean, hello, Grease oh, is the word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to see that movie at the drive-in with me too. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Love it. And what is your favorite comedy? Oh, um, that's a good one. I don't know that I have a favorite comedy if I can be really super honest. Have you ever seen the movie Elf with Will Ferrell? Yeah, I'm not a big Will Ferrell fan. Oh, I don't like stupid comedy. Okay, like I don't like stupid comedy. Um, well, comedy is stupid, so yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm gonna take a pass on that one. I'm not really sure. How about a romantic comedy? Something borrowed. Okay. <laughs> Who is your favorite actor? I love Matthew McConaughey. And how come? Um, well, his Southern drawl, hello. Um, but I just, I love his, I just, I love all the characters that he plays. Like he's not cat, like he's not one stereotypical role mm -hmm. I find. So I love him. I, I, uh, I love him. Awesome. And actress. Ew, that's a hard one. Um, I don't know that I have one specific that I love 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 like julia roberts i love julia roberts i would say right now who i'm really kind of loving is melissa mccarthy melissa mccarthy yep from bridesmaids well bridesmaids i mean she was hilarious in bridesmaids but i don't know if you just saw nine perfect strangers no on, we... on amazon okay yeah so she just i mean every role she seems that i've seen her in 
she morphs. And so I'm really enjoying her. She was really good at nine perfect strangers. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for sharing thank you. everything you did tonight. Really appreciate it. I appreciate hope it added value to everybody's lives, especially going into the holidays. And so absolutely, this, appreciate you having me. Yeah, this chat has been blowing up. So uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Amanda, um, we, will, uh, we will let you guys know further about uh, what this relationship seminar, whatever it is that we end up putting together is. Okay. Be super fun. And uh, again, I, I mean, I think... We'd have plenty to talk about because this hour really did fly by. Perfect. And is there anything else you want to uh, share with us before you take off? No, I just, I mean, I would love to wish you and everybody just happy holidays. And, and, and really, like, as you go into the holidays, just observe. If you get triggered, just take a breath. Our brain actually can reset with six deep breaths. So take, just take <coughs> six deep cleansing breaths. And just let it go. Just let mm. it go. And right, grab so. your worthiness wand. Yeah, grab your worthy wand and just be like, yeah, okay, you know. But no, I mean, listen, I, I, I think that there is no other emotion to live and to strive. And there's nothing else to desire more than love. And, and I really think it's worth fighting for. It's worth mm -hmm. discovering. But it starts with being. So that's my invitation to everybody this evening is, is how could you be more love? How could you be more loving? Right? So when we start to see the world through the lens of love, what isn't possible? So awesome reconfirmation yeah. for who we really are. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate it. Much love to you. Have <laughs> a great holiday and I'll see you soon. Absolutely. Bye. Right. Take care. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here for another amazing episode of Coffee with Colin. Thanks for being here. And, uh, you know, as we enter into this holiday season, there's, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for us to look back over the past year and uh, just see how far we've come, what we've accomplished. And I just want to remind you to uh, take a second just to think about where we were last year at this time. Uh, I think we've come a long way over the past year, the accomplishments that we've had and what we really have been able to overcome has been nothing short of a miracle. And I think especially right now, it's easy for us to, like Amanda was saying about comparison and that sort of thing. It's, it's so easy for us to compare and look around and see that maybe we're not where we think we should be, or we look at what other people are doing and, uh, and it can make, it put us in a, a spot where it's just not fair to us. Um, I think, again, if you just look back at where we've come from over the past year and just, I think it's important to just be proud of what we've done, what we've been able to get through. A lot of us are dealing with just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of change in our life. And that's why I love coming on here and just bringing everyone together because together we can accomplish amazing, great things. And uh, with that being said, I am going to be starting my next Inspire course at the beginning of the year on January 16th. And over the next 12 days, I'm going to be doing something special. It's called the 12 Days of Christmas. And over the next 12, 12 days, I'm going to be going on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and just sharing with you some, some, uh, some personal experiences and some insight on what, uh, what, you, what you can expect out of doing the Inspire course. Not only that, but also just to take a reflective look on who we are. Like Amanda said tonight, it is so important to know who you are and have a good relationship with yourself before you can confidently go out there into the world and be your best self. So if you're really looking to start something new or to start getting out of your comfort zone to level up in your career or to go after that lifelong life partner relationship that I think we all desire and would love to have, this is your opportunity to do something new, do something different, do something that will help start creating more of that roadmap in your life for you to be able to start fulfilling on the things that maybe you've been putting off or that you've been afraid of. And this six week Inspire course really is a great opportunity for you to get really in touch with who you are. We do a lot of writing exercises and we do some introspective work with regards to asking some of the questions that maybe you've never asked before about who you are. And in the, at the end of all of this, 
you are going to have such a clear and inspired connection to who you really are on that soul level, on that spiritual, from that spiritual place. And this is where the magic of life exists. Again, it's not about all the toys that we have or how much money we have or how we look. It truly is about connecting to our spiritual sacred selves and speaking to each other on that plane. And that is the plane in the world that I love to play in. And that's where the magic happens. So if you'd like to join me, I'm going to be doing again this week some uh, uh, some lives on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to share some uh, some more about the course. And then uh, the course starts again January 16th. If you're looking for more information, you can email me at info at In the meantime, I uh, would love to see any more comments or shoot a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notifications on when I'm going to be going back live so that you don't miss any more insp insight or inspiration. And uh, this is our last Coffee with Colin for 2021. Can you believe it's 2022 already? This is crazy. Uh, but I'm excited about what the future has to hold. I mean, we're going to build on all the experiences that we have and really take it and refine it and put together some specific goals for you to go out there and really have the life of your dreams. It is possible, and I would love to help you make it happen. So thanks again for being here tonight, and I will see you guys all very soon, if not in the new year.